Whoa! Stop! Don't come any closer. Girl. 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 It's a girl. girl. Oh my gosh. Where are you from? You're a girl. No noise. You from Earthy? Girl! Dave! Shut up, Todd. Sorry, I'm sorry. I've just never... Never seen a girl before. Earth. Are you from Earth? You're really pretty. Yellow hair. I found her! I found her! Hi everyone, I'm Dom Griffin. I'm a film critic and you're watching The Armchair Auteur. This is an ongoing video series I do where we talk about new movies, old movies, screenplay analysis, that sort of thing. So if you like movies and film culture and you have to see somebody pick those things apart, please consider subscribing. Today I am reviewing Chaos Walking, the new sci-fi action thriller starring Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley, directed by Doug Liman. That was delayed heavily because of the pandemic and a bunch of other production factors, and it's finally here this weekend on VOD. I am aware that I recently savaged another Tom Holland starring movie, and uh, this movie is not going to fare much better, so I guess I just want to get out of the way and say, Tom Holland stands, please don't interact. I love our sweet dear boy just as much as you do, but he needs to make better career decisions. Going to this movie, I only knew two things about it. Thing one, that it is based on some kind of young adult novel adaptation. And two, at some point the studio hired Charlie fucking Kaufman to adapt the books into a movie, and though the script has been through numerous hands since then, that alone made me fascinated to see it. As to the first point, I have extremely little interest in most movies based within this particular subgenre. To me, YA feels like a repetitive and incestuous genre, at least from what little I understand about it through cultural osmosis and dreadful movie adaptations. Oh, I don't doubt that there's good and exciting work being done in that space, but unfortunately, what rises to popular consciousness in the mainstream is the same weird, tropey bullshit that keeps popping off. Chaos Walking, which is no bullshit, based on a book titled The Knife of Never Letting Go, Jesus Christ, <laughs> written by Patrick Nett, had the potential to be a break away from these repetitive films, as I understand the source material is more than a little subversive and designed to be critical of these similar books it might otherwise get compared to. But in execution, the movie itself, plagued by rewrites and studio notes after negative test screenings, is too much of a mess to really capitalize at the underlying ideas that separate it from the rest of the pack. This is a movie that Doug Liman finished shooting sometime in November of 2017, only for reshoots to be staved off by scheduling conflicts until April of 2019, with director Fidi Alvarez behind the camera. I like Doug Liman quite a bit, and even though I often confuse him for Luke Jenner, frontman of The Rapture, he's a filmmaker who has made a lot of bangers in his career, and also his fair share of duds. So it's a bummer this absolute misfire falls into the latter category. But we should probably talk about the story itself now. Chaos Walking is a story set in the future where a human colony on a new planet has been plagued by two tragedies, a weird phenomenon called the noise that makes all human men's thoughts audible to anyone passing by, along with a weird halo glow of images, and a massacre of all the women in the settlement at the hands of the natives, an alien race called the Spackle. In this world, Tom Holland plays Todd Hewitt, a boy struggling to mind his noise and become a man, who happens upon the first woman he's ever seen with his own eyes, a colonist named Viola, played by Daisy Ridley, whose ship crashed her here. She wants to get a signal out to her people so a ship can come save her, which brings them into conflict with the mayor, David Prentice, played by Mads Mikkelsen. As you might guess, the history of the settlement, as taught to Todd, isn't entirely true, and there are some fucked up reveals and twists and turns, but as with most YA novel adaptations, it mostly just features two pretty white people running from large packs of character actors slumming it for a paycheck, and Nick Jonas for some reason. I won't pretend that this isn't an ambitious movie, or even one that in failure still feels more interesting than, you know, whatever the fuck the Maze Runner was, but outside of its pet themes and its core ideas, it is a depressingly bland endeavor, which is to be expected when 12 different screenwriters including the novel's writer, try to pare a thorny book down into a digestible action thriller. My biggest issue with this movie, from the jump, is its central conceit, which feels entirely too hat on a hat. For any kind of science fiction movie, or just something that takes a break from reality in general, whatever the core concept is needs to be one singular idea. It's just easier for audiences to process. But for Chaos Walking, we have to accept that we're in the future, on another planet, that there's this unexplained phenomena that makes men's inner thoughts literal broadcast, and that it's a world without women. Now, as the story progresses, at least one of those leaps is addressed dramatically, so I won't spoil it or dig into it really, but it's all still a bit much, you know? Especially given how borderline hilarious it is in actual practice. He thinks he's a man, but he's never killed a thing. So, I just doubt it. Okay, they're gonna beat the crap out of me now. I'm gonna hurt you. Billy sent me. I'll get the girl. Bring it to practice. I also fundamentally cannot stand this particular aesthetic anymore of future set stories where everything has been blasted back to the past. Someday someone is going to bring this vibe back and make it cool again, but for now, sci-fi tales that look and feel like shitty westerns is played out. Especially since this movie does that Firefly thing where a bunch of people all sound like old prospectors to sell the subgenre. Like why the fuck does Nick Jonas talk like this? Catch us, girls. 
What is this shit? When his father, played by Mads Mikkelsen, talks like this. Very clever use of your noise, son. Aaron likes me. He thinks I'm a man. I reckon you'll be riding with the Spaggle Patrol before long. Very clever. I know the overall look and feel are supposed to serve a purpose, but along with the nomenclature and tone of the story, Chaos Walking often feels like an SNL parody sketch of a YA novel adaptation. And it's like a battle between motors and horses, like technology versus horse. And speaking of Mads Mikkelsen, his performance is probably the only interesting thing in the entire movie. And given he's obviously going to be the villain, it's truly a shame, because the things you discover about his character make him easily contemptible, despite being the singular figure you find even remotely compelling. We have to protect each other. To do that, it's important you learn how to tame things, Todd. Tame? Huh? Break them. Control them. Just look at what a bad motherfucker this cat is, rolling around in his McCabe and Mrs. Miller-ass coat. But Daisy Ridley, as is the case through much of her career, doesn't have much to do. There's a whole movie to be made about Demi Bashir and Kurt Summer as farmer dads this production didn't have the room for, but otherwise, there's no one to root for or be interested in. Todd Hewitt is kind of the perfect role for Tom Holland, so I get why he's in this, and he does his usual shtick pretty well, but he's too irritating to really care about. It's hard not to think that a smaller scale drama exploring the same themes as the book, one that could really dig into the psychosexual underpinnings of its core premise, would have allowed Holland's boyish frustrations with the prison of masculinity to form into a really fascinating portrait. I'm gonna kill him. I swear to God, I'm gonna kill him. Mara said, You gotta kill him. Don't look at me like that. You gotta kill this fucking girl. But instead, it's like watching Peter Parker trapped inside a particularly bad remake of What Women Want that looks like M. Night Shyamalan's The Village. There's just so much stuff to do with these ideas in this setup, but in trying to make the movie fit into a tight runtime and appeal to all four quadrants, anything that could be useful or intriguing has been sanded down into nothingness. Like, if this is a world with no women, are these guys also ornery because none of them are in any way fluid so they just farm and never fuck? Do none of them mind their noise long enough to get a nut off every now and again? The book clearly wanted to explore the inherent toxicity of masculinity and how destructive patriarchal forces can be for society, in some pretty blunt and broad ways, but that never gets explored beyond Tom Holland looking befuddled at seeing a girl for the first time and not having the words to describe being blonde. Oh my god, girl! She's here. Yellow hair. Shit. Uh, what the hell? Face girl. Oh my god. Girl! Like, at multiple points, the movie teases the idea that the noise, while a burden, can also be weaponized as some kind of a superpower, but that's never really fleshed out either, which seems dumb given that the big thing getting in the way of the story's more cerebral elements is its many half-hearted attempts to make this feel like a big action movie. Movie. That would certainly have spiced this shit up a little bit. And the plot itself feels both too fast and too boring at once. At times propulsive to a fault, while others feel like the farmhouse sequence from Age of Ultron playing out at half speed, as if some new form of torture the CIA is testing out on moviegoers before deploying on dissidents. For a few separate moments, you can feel the hint of a more interesting movie trying to scratch through the surface, clawing through a dense layer of monotony but failing to get enough room to breathe. And it's a shame, really, because on paper, bad title, dumb source material name, and goofy aesthetic aside, this had the potential to be a franchise that went some more disturbing and meaningful places than where most YA novel adaptations end up. And because of its abject failure, the likelihood any studio will greenlight an adaptation like this, much less one where they might get a wild hair up their ass and think of Charlie Kaufman to write it, has dwindled down to next to nothingness. So for now, it'll remain a sad curio and a cautionary tale. Too bad. That's my take on Chaos Walking. I wouldn't suggest watching it, but like, if you're bored maybe, I guess? I don't know. It just seems like a real waste of time and a real piece of wasted potential. And those are always the hardest movies to watch. When you think this could have been good and you can imagine the good version of it in your head, but what you're watching just doesn't come through. But yeah, I don't watch it, don't watch it, don't watch it. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hit the little bell icon to get notifications when I put out new videos. And if you have any thoughts, like if you've read the book or you've seen the movie already, or you have anything you want to argue or share with me, please do so in the comments below. I have not read the book. I read the Wikipedia and some reviews. I'm kind of wondering if this is something I should actually seek out, something I should try to get into. I probably won't, but I mean, maybe if someone convinces me, I might try. So thank you guys again. Hope you guys are doing well, staying safe, being good to yourselves and each other. I will see you all in the next one.